Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another heat kit. I think this one is my heat kit video number 11. So this heat kit is an electronic switch model ID 101. The whole idea about this product is to take two analog inputs just like an oscilloscope and then chop it into one channel that will go to a one channel oscilloscope so it's a front end for a one channel oscilloscope to make it into a two channel i really hope this one works so we can we can try this out we got some problems some of the knobs here, they're just completely stuck. So I will have to uh, open and inspect and fix it. Oh, this one works, but... Ugh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> got so we got a screw loose. Zero and zero and some balance. I found uh, two of them for sale at the moment. One is on eBay for uh, $40 plus uh, shipment. And the other one is on the English um, eBay for £95. And that one looks a lot better, more beautiful condition. So I think that is uh, what this unit could be uh, worth with a little bit of luck maybe. Trying to clean and make those potentiometer operate again is just extremely difficult. Normally you just give them a tiny little spray of contact 61 or something like that and then oopsie doopsie and they turn into brand new in a second but those are just really really hard to move. So I had to move them really really hard and I also filled them up with alcohol to try and um, um dissolve the old lubricant that turned itself into chewing gum because that's actually what happens there's a reason why i remove those two um you can see what happens when i do it like this snip snap my fingers as you can see here <laughs> so that is the problem you see i even got like blood on that one so that sucks <laughs> so don't say that i don't uh really suffer <laughs> i try my very best but i really want these two to move and i want them to be like new annoying but anyway there are 2k linear potentiometers right so it should be fairly easy to uh replace them with some uh, brand new ones let's see if i got anything stuck or at least maybe we should try and uh, see if this thing works um i've been looking a little bit on the uh, board here and everything looks like it's in a really good condition I can uh, by the way maybe I should show you the schematic of this unit I got the schematic uh, from a radio museum and uh, so that's a really good site for schematics of all sorts of stuff and you can see the two power supplies down here there's a 12 volt and a 20 volt and I think that's a little bit weird why is it not symmetric and also if we look at the schematic, all the different um, transistors, if, if the, the way that it amplifies, the, the way that it switches over, everything is not symmetric. It's not balanced, it's not push-pull or anything like that. So I think this unit uh, isn't really that fast. I mean, this is designed for really, really low frequency stuff and it's probably for a low frequency oscilloscope as well. So that is what we should probably test uh, first before I waste any more time in re trying to repair those annoying potentiometers. So the the two two um, synchronization outputs here for synchronizing A and B, um, they are just if you want to trick on something externally. But why would you do that? You want these two, uh, you want this to be completely floating and free running. You want to actually trick on one of the incoming signals before it is 
uh, multiplexed or time switched or chopped uh, is what you would call this unit. Here's what we'll do. I've got a one kilohertz um, signal into, uh, well, both of them a one kilohertz. One is sine and one is a triangle. I put this for one volt and one volt DC. And um, I think that is uh, what we'll do. And then let's just turn it on and see if there's any hoppa hoppa. See, it is chopping. So how are we going to make this work? So this is the separation. See, this is one. So far so good. And this is the gain. Okay, so this is the gain for that channel. How about the other one? Oh, see, there's a problem. This one is not, what is all this doing? Aha, huh, so it will now input one channel. Yes, so this is input B. Then we'll go to A. Aha, no input on A. Okay, so that is what we need to fix. So that it's the, probably the chopper that is not working. This is going to be fun to, uh, to figure out. But at least, <laughs> at least there is life. The oscillator is working, but I think, see, it is chopping, right? Because I get the green output here chopped. And uh, that is, of course, my input uh, signal, that one. See? And the other one, see, there's no response. What if I switch, if I change these two? See? Then you see the triangle goes through and then the sine wave up here is not coming through quite interesting oh i put it into ground there right no it didn't matter yeah okay great a input not working so far so good we got a diagnose i think i figured it out i think this unit actually works see here's what i did it's all about the separation and the gain. Um, I was over driving. See, this way I got no signal on the one of the channels. See, here's my sine wave and my triangle. So the idea is you can't have them that separate that much. See, and you're going to overdrive. But anyway, here you got the two different channels. Um, please try and, and pretend you don't see the blue one. That is needed for... A trigger. I could, of course, use external trigger or something like that, right? But the fun thing is that this scope here, of course, shows these lines uh, very clearly. Well, maybe I could try and hide these a little bit. See what I've done. I made this um, scope try to hide the lines so it's in dot mode. I also turned off some resolution and some sample rate and all that kind of stuff. And now, look at that. Here we got the two different channels using only one channel. And uh, so when it hyper jumps from one line to the other one, uh, one you just see those tiny little dots because of the sample rate. If we uh, shown this on a uh, an analog scope, you'll probably not even see it. So, and then you can play with the different, you can even, let's, uh, let's play with the, uh, the different uh, frequencies and stuff like that for see this is the other channel so you, can, you can play with that probably make it go absolutely crazy and unstable but i think it really works and you can imagine if you this i think this one is from 1971 and i mean can you imagine having an extra channel from some kind of cool kit that you designed or built or something like that. See, here we can easily poke around with it like that. Wow, man. That is just amazing. <laughs> so it really works. This is just great. It was all, see, overdriving the gain. That is not how you make this work. And the hyper jumps kind of go out of the screen and then um you see here you go your vectors and if i see 
what I'm saying. Here we go with the jumps from one channel to another. The idea is you don't want to see that. You want to, you want to hide as much as uh, of that as possible and just go into dot mode so you don't see the hyper jumps. Wow, man. I am, of course, having a lot of fun with this unit. So you can actually also under chop. And th this is really funny because we got four different speeds of chop and it's 122 hertz, 800 hertz, 1 kilohertz and 4.8 kilohertz. So that's the chopping frequency. And uh, at the moment, I'm just inputting some really low frequencies and I'm running in the yeah, low chop. So <laughs> you can e actually easily see what you're doing here, right? It's a lot of fun. I just try and imagine being back in 1971 with only one channel oscilloscope. And here we got two signals I need to investigate at the same time. Are they in the sync and what are they doing? So this is the, I think this is the sine wave, right? What if I change this to be at the same frequency as the other one? And actually this is the same frequency as the, as the chop, right? So what if I go uh, 244 hertz, double the speed? Aha, uh -huh. quite interesting. Then I get half of it. Because the other half of it is, of course, um, showing the other channel, right? Yeah, that's, of course, how it is. Here is the schematic. It consists of two identical parts. The top part is A input and the bottom part is B input. So I'm not going to talk a lot about B input because it's <laughs> they're exactly identical, right? So let's uh, zoom in on the top left corner where we can see the A input and the power supply. First, I think it's a little bit funny to, uh, to look at the power supply. Uh, we have a plus 20 volts and a negative 12 volts. So I think that is uh, funny that it's not symmetric, um, but that's just the way that they have uh, made this uh, system. In the upper left, we have the A input, and it goes through a three-step attenuator, 100 volts, 10 volts, uh, 1 volt, and then a ground in the middle, and then it's the same, but in AC mode. And you can see uh, on the switches, uh, this is how they have made it with a capacitor you short in DC mode, so that's uh, quite simple. Then it's a high impedance, a high input impedance to the input protection system that is made of what they call D101 and D103. But that's, of course, just two transistors <laughs> where they are not uh, connecting anything to uh, the, the two base inputs. And I mean, what kind of a funny way to make an input protection. This is not how I would recommend you um, to do that but <laughs> of course it works uh, anyway then you have a high impedance uh, field effect transistor amplifier and a current source and then the rest is uh, quite simple with uh, q105 and uh, 107 a differential uh, amplifier it goes down to a uh, the adjustable current source uh, that is a q109 the gain potentiometer is the one uh, on the top here. We don't really see it on this uh, super zoom here. But of course, uh, this is how you can um, connect those two emitters more and more together and this way make less and less gain. So if you look at the emitter follower, uh, the output uh, Q111, uh, see this one generates a positive uh, signal uh, and there's a pull down resistor to ground uh, that and then it goes to the right i will explain more in a second next page so here we are now zoomed in on the oscillator and the signal switching parts so i have shown the switch uh, here uh, with a little uh, red arrow in a position so this is uh, of course the oscillator is stopped in either a or b uh, positions and then the other four positions, we have the um, four oscillator frequencies, 122 hertz, 800 hertz, 1 kilohertz, 
or 4.8 kilohertz chopping speeds. So this oscillator, of course, uh, is now in uh, position A. So that means a Q201 is turned on. And that means that its emitter is low because now current goes through that transistor, right? So when that uh, 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 Q201 uh, emitter is held low, that means uh, Q202 is held off. And that means uh, the signal on top of its collector goes up. And this way it turns off Q203. So, so that um, transistor's um, collector goes down. Okay? And that turns off Q302, but also it turns on Q204. That is important for us because that one is now turning on Q301. And with that one turned on, we now have a pull up signal on that base Q301, right? So that signal now goes through the switching diode uh, D301 and to the pull down resistor of uh, the signal source. So now the signal can go through that diode. Uh, it's getting amplified uh, in Q301 and then it's going to go to the output. See, if you see this uh, little um, signal diode and a resistor to ground, that is, of course, to make this a DC level shift. So when both of these transistors are off, uh, you will have this um, hyper jump to a very negative voltage between the switch yields. And this way you are switching outside of the scopes, uh, the view of the scope picture. So that is uh, how this system is done.